Welcome back, Hunters! I'm the Survival Vis, and we return Monster Hunter 4 Ultimate G-Rank Edition. We're going to be rounding out this week with taking on a Rajang this time. We finally got a vote into the last poll to kind of break up the three-way tie for third place. And Rajang took out uh, the spot over regular Kirin and regular Devil Joe. And I think what I'm going to do is next week I'm going to do the counter flip of the first two hunts, where it'll start with a regular Devil Joe and then a regular Kirin. And then we can see what we'll fill into that last day, uh, just as it comes up. And go after G rank for Zhang, I think you only have two options. It's either through a guild quest that you have to try grinding so much to get and open up, or you can go into an event quest, if you have access to the event quest, and do Foreboding Lightning. I'm trying to think of which one I want to tackle. Um, I don't know which one would be easier to take on, if I'm honest. Maybe I'll try doing the Foreboding Lightning. I don't know if this is a souped up one again or not. And you know what, maybe what I'll do... Just because of how Furious Rajang... I mean, we hunted Furious Rajang uh, in the village. And that wasn't too bad, but the hub always is more difficult because... Back up before World, Monster Hunter was not good at scaling. It was bad at scaling. It basically assumed if you were playing this game, you had multiplayer access and you go on to hunts with stuff. Yeah, no, you don't get that a lot. And because Monster Hunter 4 Ultimate was for 3DS, I think it could have been even, like, more suffering. So you wouldn't have had access reliably to multiplayer. And 4 Ultimate feels like the G rank was entirely and exclusively made for going after this with other people. Like... That's why I think the Palicos completely taper off in their usefulness. Once you hit G rank with these guys, they lose a lot of the ability to really help you. Like, they don't survive through as many attacks, it doesn't even seem like they get focused for... by the monsters that often. And because of that, you can't even use them as, like, distractions for yourself to get a little bit of extra aid. Yeah. Considering we went after a uh, Furious Rajang, I don't think there's going to be anything to surprise us with the base version here. But I do got to be careful of what he's up to. Speaking of, I can't actually see him behind that pillar. Man, I'm surprised how far he can get with that attack. Okay, I take out the crab. Uh, you didn't even take out one of them. Okay, shooting through the carcass, which isn't exactly good. Oh boy. Okay, Calico, we are literally hunting the monster. Don't stand there like an idiot right beside me. Yeah, talking about how, like, the uh, Palicos you can have with you aren't that helpful. Prime example right there. You can be engaged with one right in the middle of a fight. And they just act like complete morons for what's going on. Okay, so that's him enraged again. Oh, gotta be really careful of that attack. Because he has, like, a weird front hop. It doesn't keep going diagonal up till he gets close to you. Oh, really? Now, I call a little bit of BS. That seems, like, way too far of reach for the tremor. For, like, the hand down thing.
And that's going to be a dangerous attack to really be on watch for is the uh, lightning beam. And mind the giant boulders. <laughs> God, he's so quick, and the heavy bow gun is just so slow. Oh, I don't know if he was going after Runa or me, but again, I wish the cats, as long as you're in an area with another monster, would have a setting that tells them, steer the hell away from you. Don't be right beside the hunter. Don't be within, like, 30 feet of them. Just keep some distance away. That would make hunting so much better with having these guys out and about. Oh, okay, so he's just going to grab another rock to throw at us. Overall, I haven't seen anything that new. I'm... I'm not sure what Rajan gets with G-Rank. I don't know if it's like the uh, pinball move. Oh, and there he goes flying off and away. <laughs> yeah, basically the Superman way of flying around. But yeah, I don't know if he gets anything G-Rank or it's just that he becomes a lot quicker with the movement so it's hard to squeeze like attacks in against him effectively. that, or maybe he also gets prone to going into his aggro phase more easily. Ow. Oh, actually interrupted him on mid slam. Okay, yeah, so there's one, two, three. I have a feeling that was actually meant for Calico more than us, but I'll take the openings that we can get. Like there, that's the nice distance I'd like these guys to keep more often on hunts, is they're not right on top of us, they're a ways back, they're trying to deal with the monster. It doesn't feel like they're a liability more so than a little bit of uh, help now and then. Nope, oh, and he's out of aggro, or... He's out of super angry, because I don't think Rajang ever have a non-angry mode. <laughs> oh! Okay, Runa finally doing some good work there. Yeah, I... God, it feels like it's so often going into this aggro state, doesn't it? <laughs> work with that. There we go. Both horns broken. I'm hoping it's a sign we're doing some decent damage into him to have those both gone. And knock down again. Ow. God, I hate that little side... Although I hate this more. I... That's probably one of the only times I've successfully dodged the pinball being like that caught by it. And I guess what you... You really gotta know what you're doing for that, because it's super easy to get hit if you like got a slow weapon out and he does it. Oh, 
Okay, so he's flying back up. I think he's going back to area not or seven. That's it. No? Maybe he went to area three then? It looked like it was coming up more towards seven, maybe ten? I will keep on him and see though, but yeah, dealing with Furious at times, well, e any of the Rajangs really. If you're the f only target, you're going to be in store for a bad time. Okay, let's just try to track him down. I don't know how much more health he might have. We'll make up some more normal two to have with us. Oh, there. Oh, this might be a bad area to be fighting him. Although, I don't think he'll cover enough ground to actually hit us. Yeah. Oh, the stupid little bunny hop thing. God, that's one thing I wish Monster Hunter never incorporated into itself was like the ledges, verticality things that it has. Because I swear, they cause more problems than they make interesting on hunts. Okay, he's out of stamina, so I'm hoping that means he'll be pretty easy to deal with for a little while. Well, the cooling effect we don't have to worry about right now. Oh, jeez. Even out of stamina, he's still got quite a... Uh... No, oh, there we go. Yeah, he's still agile, even without the stamina. Oh, crap. Oh, I wasn't sure if that was to me or Runa, but I think we got lucky there. Again, that trailer just feels like it covers a little too much distance around him. Oh, and he's gone full... Oh, don't even have the time to really get a potion in and survive. That was lucky that that actually got off. And again, just barely squeezing in a lot of what we can do with his G-Rank speed. Please stop spamming the pinball. That, oh my god, it really feels like some of these attacks are so unfair just meant to completely lock you up and guarantee get hit. Like if it wasn't for me holding the run and desperately trying to get out of that beam, that would have been a direct hit. I was kind of hoping this would be a fast hunt with, uh, having, like, the weakness exploit and the normal up on the set that it has, but... Rajang's not really letting us get the openings to maximize our damage output, is he? Oh, I think he's going off... yeah. I can't tell if he's going to Area 5, the nest, or Area 10. I think he's coming here, yeah. Okay, so he's landing somewhere in here. Okay, so that's just how he might change uh, what level he's on, is one of those.
And now we're in really tight quarters fighting him. Oh, he is limping though. So, what? I think he's trying to find the boulder to toss at us. Yeah, that is what he's doing. He's limping around trying to snag that. Okay, I think that should be enough shots to put him down once he gets to an area we can duel with him. Yeah, thankfully that was at us and not one of the cats. Come on, just a few more. Sh there we go. Oh yeah. She ran Krishang. I don't know if I would hunt him with heavy bow guns beyond this episode or what we've already tackled. He's just such a fast combat oriented fight. You really need to have a way to just sheed and panic run or panic dive. Did get a few good bits of material from him though, so we can take those back. And that is another monster off of our list that we can cross off. Or another monster on our list we can cross off. My my brain's a little fried from running around dealing with this guy. So that was Rajang taken care of. Just get that off. Yeah, so we've got Devil Joe Kirin we'll tackle next week. And we'll see if this was enough to unlock another Age Text quest or not. I think we might have one to go, or this will be unlocked. But we've got to get back to the hub and see first. Yeah, quest complete, thank god. The worst one of his abilities, I think, is the pinball. Like, the beam move, it's powerful, but you can read it. The pinball, though, if you have a slow weapon that takes a while to put away, can just get you so brutally, so easily. And yeah, we'll just sell those. They're nothing really good there. One more quest, and then I'll have something opened up. So I'll try tackling that on my own, and then... I'll see what we're going to go up against for that last episode next week. But we'll just head out, take a look at the armor, because I think the gear, we just have to keep upgrading Rajang stuff to unlock that. Although, actually, there is one thing I might be able to get uh, weapon-wise. Yeah, the Eclair White Bolt. That one I can get upgrade. And then... Oh, it's a Light Bowgun from Monster Hunter 3 Ultimate I've always liked the look of. I've never really used it all that much, just because it's, it's from Abyssal Legiacris, so it's like one of the end-game weapons. But because I only got, like, three ultimate as the series on the emulator, I never really had a chance to play around and try to see what it's like, so... I might try getting this, although I don't know what you need to go after for the Abyssal Legiacris D-Shocker and the Dynamo. I'll have to check and see what I need for, like, getting those. Well, let's see here. Okay, so... Ah, uh, do, do, do It is... Oh, there we go. The Grand Hermit Robe and the Grand God's Pure Robe. I think I kind of prefer these over the... Oh, it's hard to say. Like, I think with the right texture work, it can really look good. But I think for Ultimate, just because of, like, its state, even... It's state and graphics even with the HD project to it. I think the contrast and the lighting can really catch it to make it not look as good as it could at times. But this gives us reload speed, gloves off, spirit and thunder attack, and then gloves off, spirit and thunder attack for blade masters. Oh yeah, here they are. Again, Rajang's stuff has always had a pretty nice trademark look, and I really do think I'm curious to see what it'll look like in Sunbreak for, uh, like, the stuff. I know Iceborne, I still miss that we don't have as many good looks carried back and forth because gunner armor's no longer a thing. But, oh yeah, I, the big buckler arm is always a favorite of mine. And carried over quite nicely between the two. I doubt I'll farm for that. But at least we have seen another monster there taking a look at what that offers. I just want to see... See, there's... Okay, maybe I have to keep going a little further in the age text, and then we'll unlock the Abyssal Legiacris stuff. I do want to see what it takes to get that, but for now, we are good to end this episode right here. Thank you all very much for joining me on this episode of Monster Hunter 4 Ultimate G-Rank Edition. If you enjoyed the video, you should give it a like, 
And if you have any comments, tips, or tricks, be sure to leave the comments right down below. We've still got a, quite a bit of the monster roster to go through, so we'll try tackling that and then see how we're sitting towards the end of the series if we'll try tackling the Apexes or not. For now, though, we have a lot of hunts lined up, and we'll start them again next week. Until I do see you in another video or episode, Hunters and Survivors, please remember, as always, to take care, stay alive, and happy hunting.